us patiently. I want to begin to worship the blessed Holy Spirit. His manifest presence is in the house in a special way this morning. Worship Him. Use your lungs to worship Him. Use your veins to worship Him. Use your ligaments to praise Him. Use your kidneys because they have no kidney stones to worship Him. Use your breath of life to worship Him. Praise the Holy of Holies. Praise the King of Kings. The Bible says, and John said, I saw the 24 elders laid down their crowns and bowed before the ancient of days. Lay down your dignity and your glory and worship our Father. Lay down your achievement and your qualifications. Lift up your lungs and worship Abba Father. Worship eternal King. Worship the one that breathes in your nostrils the breath of life. Open up your mouth and bless the Lord for the blood that flows through your veins. Bless the Lord because you have the blood that carries the life of Jesus the Christ. Bless the name of the Lord because you have an active brain and working brain and an active mind this morning. We bless you, darling Holy Spirit, this morning. We worship and magnify your holy name. Thank you for the privilege and the blessings to be in your presence this morning. As you worship him, receive of his grace, receive of his glory, receive of his power. As you worship him, receive of his mass and his counsel. No matter what brought you this morning, keep worshiping him and keep blessing him. As you take in the breath of worship, as you release the breeze of praise, you are taking in the breath of life. As you raise your lungs to worship him, your lungs are receiving more health. Your lungs are receiving more life. Your lungs are receiving more power. Your lungs are receiving more glory. Your lungs, as you air out your voice to praise him, as you breathe in this morning, more of his life, more of his grace, more of his glory, more of his power. More of the breath that made man, as Job said, that the breath of the Lord, the spirit of man is the breath of the Lord, that breath that created you, that breath that made your soul to be active, as you breathe, as you praise, as you praise out, as you praise out of your mouth, out of your lungs, more life is entering you, more life is coming new. In the name of Jesus, no matter what has been troubling you, no matter what brought you this morning, as you lung out, he brings in more life into your lungs, more life into your lungs, more life into your lungs, more life into someone's lungs. In the name of Jesus, I can see more life in someone's lungs. As you worship him, as you adore him, as you magnify him, he's purifying your lungs, he's giving you nine lungs. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we praise you. We shout praises to your holy name. We shout praises to your wonderful name. We worship you, Lord, for this day that you have made eternal good. We will rejoice and be glad in this day. Thank you for this day. We pray that may your kingdom come. May your will be done today as it is in heaven. May the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and this Christ to rule and to reign forevermore. Have your word. Have your way, Lord, as we subject ourselves to the authority of that which created the heavens and the earth, the word of God. I pray that the word of God will come in all its totality. And in all various dimensions that will be able to reach out to each and every need of man. In the name of Jesus, you say the heavens and earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. Pray that Lord, I will sit at your thought of your word. Let life flow through us. We pray that this morning your word will come with simplicity. Will come with clarity. Will come with accuracy. Will come with understanding. That every simple mind will be made empowered to the glory of God our Father. Thank you, darling Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious my name, we are praying and believed. Amen. <laughs> Let's give God a mighty hand of praise in Jesus' mighty name. As you kindly take your seat.
in the wonderful presence of God. I greet all of you in the precious mighty name of Jesus the Christ and uh, thank you so much for choosing to pray with us today here at Kingdom Life Tabernacle. Those of you here in the church auditorium, those uh, on our social media platform, on our online radio, welcome you and we bless the name of the Lord for all of you in Jesus mighty name. I'd like to see if you are visiting us for the first time, you're praying with us for the first time here at Kingdom Life Tabernacle. May I see you with a show of your hand. Your first time visitor here in our Sunday service, morning service. If you're here visiting us for the first time, can I see you with a show of your hand? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you're visiting us, your visitor. Oh, wow. We have a visitor. Amen. Let's clap for her and make a full welcome in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for choosing to pray with us this morning and they feel at heaven. In the name of the after service, somebody will be able to talk to you in the name of the to the rest of us. We welcome all of you and thank you for praying for turning up this morning. Uh, all of you, you look great, and we bless the name of the Lord for each and every one of you in the name of the Lord. Of course, our vision as a church is to grow God's people into spiritual maturity that they may be able to manifest kingdom life holistically. Our mission is fivefold is to identify, equip, train, commission, and allow us to occupy as well as our core values, a Christ like collector, purity and love, accountability, integrity, and above all, we believe in love, in excellence. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is our last Sunday in the month of what? This is our month of what? This is our month of what? And what is our theme this month? Can I hear you louder? Can I hear you louder? This is our month. As we conclude it, I want to come up with a few things. Um, our month, uh, we've been learning and studying on how to stay on the top, on how to ascend higher, because the higher we go, the more limits we break and the more breakthrough and the more light we enjoy and the more power uh, we enjoy in the name of Jesus. We want to appreciate God for every one of you last Sunday. It was a great Sunday. We bless the name of Jesus and we give Jesus praise and glory. Today, I want to see if I could be able to conclude uh, on our teaching. Maybe, maybe we might be able to continue. I don't know. But I just want to continue with our learning. Let's again get Ephesians uh, chapter 2 from verses 4 ready to get uh, a basis of our understanding. Ephesians chapter 2, we are going to be reading. This is what the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, we are still continuing with our learning last week. We are going to be looking at a few principles as far as uh, high flight is concerned. But let's get this. The Bible says, but God who is rich in mercy... For his great love, wherewith he loved us. Of course, when he allowed Christ to come and die on our own behalf. Even when we are dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. We've been quickened and made us to be together with Christ. Then the Bible goes further to say that thereafter, after he has put us together with Christ, the Bible says, and he has raised us up together. Now, physically, we are on earth, but spiritually, we are raised up together with Christ, and that is where we are seated, and that is where we must stand in order to be able to command affairs in life. So, he has raised us up together. He has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and said that in the ages to come, which ages... Uh, uh, which ages are the ones in which we are, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. If you could give us that verse in NIV, there's something I want to pick out. The IMRB says the incomparable riches in Christ Jesus. That's what I wanted to pick out. So, Last Sunday, uh, if I can get it in NIV, that would be good. Uh, last Sunday, we looked at that when Christ died and we got born again in him. He rose us to be 
uh, together with him. Yeah, the NIV said, in order, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable, incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now, we won't have time to go through all these, those incomparable riches of grace in Christ, uh, but we shall see how the Lord will lead us. And then we saw that if we are dead and resurrected and start with Christ in heaven places, we should put all our focus to the things above, not to the things on the earth, because the things above govern or control the things on or the things below. The Bible says, um, looking at the things that are not seen, because the things that are not seen are eternal, but the things that are seen are temporal. Considering the invisible, because the invisible is eternal, but the visible are, is temporal. We should put our effort and our focus on more spiritual things than natural or physical things. That is what helps us, or that is what enables us to rule and train together with him. We saw in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, and Paul, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, Paul was giving us an instruction in order to key us into this reality, in order to put us into this reality, in order to enable us. He's showing us how do we key in in those things above. He says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Since then, since we became born again, since we accepted Christ, since we got saved, he said, since then you have been raised. Since we got born again, we've been raised with Christ. So because we've been raised with Christ, therefore he charges us in order for us to harness and to get the best of the life where we've been raised. He commands us and says, uh, he tells us that we should now set, set your hearts on the things above. Where Christ is, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father and verses of course too. And set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with christ in god <clears throat> uh, i want us to know that um if the devil will ever have victory over any child of god he will be able to achieve that by making us or making me to focus on earthly things material things if the devil can be able to convince you to focus on other things, then you are a done deal. Because everything after has got an expiry date. Everything after will decay, will waste away, will be destroyed. And it's very unfortunate that many Christians spend most of their time chasing after the earth, chasing after the world, chasing after material things and at the end of the day they end up their life frustrated because everything worldly or everything in the earth has a limit everything earthly is has an expiry date it will decay that happened especially after the fall of man after adam detached himself from god so God comes with wisdom to tell us that since we accepted Christ, since the time, we should focus on the things above. Now, there's so much above that we have not yet even bothered to accrue or to receive or to get because most of the time we end up on uh, these minor, minor things. Why? Why above? Because that is where we are meant to operate from. That's where we are meant to function from. That's where we are meant to fight better. Last Sunday, I told us that, you see, whoever is in charge of the airspace is in charge of the earth, is in charge of the world. All of us were aware nations are striving harder to find out other planets to go into galaxies, to go beyond Mars and to go all this. And the reason is they want to get uh, strategic satellite positions in order to be able to control the Earth. Because he that has the strategic satellite position will be the one in charge of the security on the face of the Earth. Because you fight better when you are on the top. You fight better when you are higher. 
fire you are able to deal with your enemies when you are at the top of your enemies that is why in the old israel they used israel jerusalem was surrounded by a wall which nehemiah built and it is said that that wall was so massive that it acted as a security gate for the entire city of Jerusalem to watch over Jerusalem. Actually, they said the wall was so large and so big that uh, six horsemen would be riding through that wall all around comfortably as high as so many meters higher. And the reason why that wall was so critical was to give a, a platform for the watch for those that were watch, watching over Jerusalem for the security purposes said that now those that are riding horses around the wall would be able to be in a po better position to see their enemies and to be able to do them before their enemies are aware <coughs> praise the name of the Lord therefore uh, it is that's why Jesus comes and says, Please don't bother about this as a thing. Seek first my kingdom and after my righteousness. Then these all these things shall come unto you. Because when you attain the kingdom and the righteousness, then you are able to be in a better position to fight better and uh, to, to win better in the games of life in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Amen. Uh, 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 the, one of the things that made Jesus to become great and very powerful, he understood this reality. And well, as he was physical on the earth, but he made sure that he never lost his D GTI at all time. Much as Jesus was physical on the earth, he never lost his his um, his position. That is. Uh, the ground of practical importance he never lost it and we're going to read a couple of scriptures and that is what put jesus constantly in victory constantly in winning battles of life constantly in charge of affair constantly in charge of his enemies constantly in charge of all them you see jesus faced the same challenges we face like all of us today but uh, no, I mean, no challenge was a trouble to Christ and he was not afraid of nothing on earth. For example, one time he had a need of transport. So when he needed to borrow a boat, it was available. One time he needed cash to pay their uh, uh, preaching license and to pay the allowance of the apostles. It, it, it never worried him. He knew what to do at every given time. Actually, just told Peter, you go get in the fish, pick a fish, get some money out of it, pay for my tax, pay for your wash, put some in our bag, and let's move on. One time, he had stayed with people for three years, I mean for three days without a meal and without nothing. It never troubled him. Why? Because from where he was operating. Now, it troubled the apostles because he told them, give them what to eat, and they didn't know what to do. But Jesus knew what to do. He told them what is around here. They said, we have five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them in my hand, give them to the Lord. I was able to multiply them. So Jesus encountered the same things we encounter in the flesh. But what made him to override them, what made him to rule and to be winning at all time, was he maintained the place of, he maintained his height. He maintained his position. He was challenging like any one of us. Because Jesus was a 100% man and a 100% God. He lived in the flesh, but he was a spiritual man. So let's look at some of the things that made Jesus to maintain that place and that position. And I want us to look at a few things. Let's get into Luke chapter 6 uh, from verse 12. We are going to be reading until verse 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. The Bible says, one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and he spent the night praying to God this is how we maintain our place of elevation this is how we keep our victory when we are not strangers to the mountain experience when we are not visitors to the mountain experience when we are not only people who go to the mountain when things are okay that might mean when things are tough when things are okay we are bound on about this is what helped jesus to maintain the law of height the law of flight this is what helped him he entered to the mountain and guess what happened in the morning he was faced with a challenge the challenge is he wanted to pick the team he wanted to work with he wanted to pick the group the team he wanted to work with in his business 
He could not just come and pick using psychology and using a few things he had studied at school. No. He had to consult the higher power in order to be able to appoint the kind of leaders, the kind of people he needed to work alongside with. So the Bible says, and when morning came, he called his 12 disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he also designated apostles. So Jesus, and of course the Bible mentioned them, although Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, a son of James and Judah Escalier, who became a traitor. Go on. He went down with them and stood on a level place, and a large cloud of disciples were there, and a great number of people from all over Judah, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of the regions around Tyler and Sidon, and what happened. And of course, who had come to hear him and to be healed of diseases, those um, diseases, those troubled by impure spirits, were. True. Of course, the, the verse goes on, and all oh, the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healed them all. It is deadly to execute any program before contacting the higher power. It is frustration to engage in any activity in your life, day-to-day -day life, without consulting the highest power. Most frustration in life comes as a result of attempting to do things without consulting the source of where things come from, and the source is God. God is speaking to us that never ever in life, if you are going to break limits, ever contact or consult anything before engaging your spiritual life, before engaging your higher heights. You'll be frustrated. You might be the best professor, the best mathematician, the best businessman, but if you're a child of God, there's a way things must be done. You don't need to depend on your abilities. You don't need to depend on the capital you have and the available com I mean, connections and contacts you have your way. Everything you do, you need to go higher in order to break limits. So Jesus spent the whole night on the mountain, at the top of the mountain. When it comes down, then work becomes easy. Why are many Christians so frustrated in life? They want to, they want to approach life without approaching it from an elevated level or an elevated view. I gave you an example of one of my daughters in the Lord here. Uh, she blesses my soul. I've seen her. She's been working as a maid. I see God raising her, blessing her. She came to my office. She was troubled and perturbed about her business. She was working as a maid. I told her, leave that place. Go and find work. She, started, she found her work in a restaurant. It wasn't working well. I told her, okay, go begin. Uh, a, a small side business she started doing it but alongside her there was a witch doing the same business so she could buy half of a good or grocery she buys would get rotten so one person told her why do you keep yourself there go and get yourself a job actually get your job he said but apostle told me to start he said no leave the, those things of apostle you won't understand him so she came in my office full and determined to forsake the assignment I had given her so she brought all possible reasons to convince me. You see, you can only convince me if you have prayed longer than me. It does not matter how well you come with, you, you coin your words very well. If you have not gone higher than me, you will never be able to convince me. Because I always labor to be higher by the grace of God. So she comes and she's, I gave her time and listened to her. Then I told her, you know what? Your problem is not the place. Your problem is not even the business. But your problem, you are still low. Rise up your life in prayer. Spend more time in prayer and fasting. When I told her that, she became radius. She became angry. She said, which kind of pastor is this? You're supposed to tell me and to counsel me to leave this job and get something. But I knew because I counsel you from an elevated view, not from a carnal view. So she went. I told her I will not change my word. Increase your prayer volume. Increase your prayer life. Spend more time in the presence of God. Come and seek God. Don't leave that business. Stay in that business. 
By that time, I think the capital of that business should have been around 100,000. So I told her, stay in there. So she went very righteous, very wrathful. So as she was, she had just passed the gate, she felt her voice speaking to her soul. You claim that that is your father in the Lord. You claim that is your pastor. Why don't you listen to him? Oh, she felt remorseful. She said, I'm sorry, Lord. And then the following week, she started coming to church. Came to church. She started praying. She increased her prayer volume. She increased her prayer life. She continued to ascend higher and higher and higher. And the more she ascended, the more limits she broke. Guess what happened later on? The person whom they were saying the same goods got a conflict with the landlord. And they literally fought. Now you can imagine if the tenant fights with the landlord, what would be the aftermath? <laughs> So eventually, her, her, her fellow company, uh, uh, partner in business, they fought and she lost the business. Actually, she left and left all her grocery in her store until they got rotten and they were pull, pulled out. So she had to leave the place and someone doing a different business came to occupy that store. That means that now her, she had now become the solo seller of the things she was selling. Her business started booming and booming and booming. I'm telling you, during COVID-19, literally every week she would bring me about money for saving 700, 1 million, 800, 1 point. And she really saved a lot during lockdown. She's no longer struggling today. She's a millionaire. Even when you don't want to clap seriously, she is. She's among the first people who paid for She was smiling while she was giving me a million. But all what I told her, increase your flight abilities. Increase. Spend more time. You see, many Christians want so much to engage into activities before engaging the one that will help the activities to function. And that is God. So, the secret of Jesus' success, he always maintained the law of light. He always maintained the law of height. He always stayed on the top. He never executed anything before spending longer into higher places. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's get Luke chapter 9 and verse 18. What does the Bible say? His disciples were, the, were with him. He asked 9, 10. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still as 20. But what about, of course the story goes on on mountain, in the private place, in the sacred place, in the higher place. You can only find your true identity in the presence of God. And you're finding your true identity will determine how the, how how many exploits you'll be able to do in life. Without understanding your true identity, you'll be a gambler in life. You'll be gambling in life. True identity and to be able to clearly define your true identity. Because it is your true identity in life that will determine your command in life. Without knowing your true identity, Anything will define you. Anything will mess you. Anything will put you down. You see, you cannot doubt what you have heard from God. You can doubt what you have heard from men, but you can't doubt what you have heard from God. If you have heard it first hand, then you can be able to stand to see it. But that is only possible if you ascended higher. The deeper you get in God, the better you are able to discover who you are. And when you discover who you are, you'll be able to command experts in life. All of us, regardless your gender, regardless your education background, regardless of your past, or regardless what has gone through your life. If you can be able to find yourself in Christ, then you can be able to, to command experts. So here, Jesus' identity is truly displayed and showed. Why? Because Jesus spent time in the presence of God. Give us verse 27, 28, and 29, still the same verse. 
what happened there. The story is a long story, but let's go through it. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Verse 28. But eight days after Jesus said this, he took again Peter and John and James with him and went up onto the mountain to pray. Again, ascending. Some of us, after getting your purpose, after identifying your identity, then you settle and you think everything is okay. Many of us, we settle for minor things. There's so much that God, that God can be able to do with us. But as we keep on ascending, as we keep on going higher, there are more limits that are broken into our lives. Listen to what happened when he, again he went to the mountain. The Bible says, as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. Now, this is something to note here. The appearance of your change will only change when you find your place in high heights. And the change of your appearance will determine who you will attract your way. The change of your appearance, the change of your coldness will determine who you will attract your way. And it is sometimes it is those that you attract will determine how much of the limits you'll be able to break. The appearance of his first chain, number two, and his clothes became bright and as the flash of lightning. In other words, his character, his nature, his lifestyle had to change. Why are we struggling with habits and issues in our lives and conditions in our lives? Because we have not stayed longer in higher places. Born again 10 years, 5 years, still struggling with few habits, a few things in our lives. Our character has not yet changed. Our garment which are our acts of righteousness have not yet changed. And guess what happened? After the changing of the face, after the changing of the character, which is the representation of the garment, the Bible says, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in a glorious splendor talking with Jesus. These are mantles. These are dimensions that come our way. These are instructions that come our way when we ascend higher highs. These are men that have lived before us that God will allow to come if we win the battles they have won before because a contact saints in glory to show it. There was a representation of the Old and the New Testament. Every one of us need a personal encounter with God. It is our encounters with him that will determine our fits in life. Every one of us, we need to stay for an encounter. Every one of us, some of the burdens you have gone through, there are people that went through it. You need to have an encounter with them to show you. Praise the name of the Lord. To show you how they overcame. Moses had to appear to show Jesus, a physical man, on how to overcome. The battles before him. Elijah had to appear to show Christ as a man. The battles that Elijah won while he was still in the flesh. So every child of God, what defines you are the encounters you get. If you're here and you have never had a personal encounter, strive to get one. Because it is the encounters that will determine your experts in life. All men and women in the scriptures that did good things, that overcame burdens and troubles, had encounters. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not easy that encounters are necessary to redefine your life. And when Jesus had this encounter, the Bible says, they spoke about his departure. They instructed him, which he was about to bring to the fulfillment at Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Peter and his companion were very sleepy. And when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. Mm -hmm. As the men were leaving, Jesus, Peter said, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. He was confused, like many people in church. A moment strikes and you don't know what to say. A moment comes your way and you don't know how to grab the moment. Many of us, you have missed our breakthrough because we don't know how to capture moments because, because we have not had encounters. 
praise the name of the Lord. It is our encounters that enable us to capture, to grab moments, and to move in God's perfect will and God's seasoning. You see, when you have an encounter, you become aware of what God is doing at all time. You are not behind. You are always on front. You are always moving on. You are always going ahead. Let me tell you how we are able to get our lift as a church. Now, as I thought the lift would be the last thing on this building because we don't need a lift now. So I was not concerned about it. So the guy, I think one of the directors of that company, Oasis, that dealt in two lifting, I don't know who brought him my way. He came to my office. He loved me. He said, uh, wow. We, we, he came and looked around. He was so excited. So in our talk, then he discovered that we need a lift on our building. I said, yeah, we need a lift. He said, yes, Apostle, if you could give us an offer, we'll be able to do this for you. Well, it was not in my mind. It was not in plan because we didn't need it urgently. But I knew that God brought him, a, that maybe this man is in my life at such a time, not by coincidence, but there's a plan. You see, when you are a spiritual man or a spiritual woman, you'll be able to capture moments. You'll be able to understand what God is doing and you'll be able to follow the flow. Sometimes you wait upon God. God has already come because you're not aware of his encounters. You end up missing God and missing a moment that was meant to take you to another level. So we kept on talking, exchanged emails. I could once in a while send him messages here and there. So one time he tells me, Apostle, you know what? There is a gap. I said, which gap? He said, there is a businessman. They, have, they are ordering for their lifts. But uh, there are two of them. But if you could consider to put down a down payment so that we can be able to manuf order the, uh, the, the manufacture of the lift at the same time with them so that during the time of transportation, we could be able to transport them together with their own lift. And that way you'll be able to save 6,000 US dollars on transportation, on shipment. It sounded good. So I told him how much down payment do we need to put up to begin the process. He said, only $3,000 we can get started. You remember I came here last one of the Sundays. I told you we need about $3,000. By Friday we need to, to wire it and then something will begin. So we put that money together. We, we gave it to one of the daughters. She helped us to wire it to China. So the lift begins. We kept on praying and believing God and trusting God and, you know, waiting upon the Lord and, you know, raising our hopes to God. A few months came by, he told me, you know, the lift is done, but there's a, now there's a Ebola again has come back. And then there's a lockdown in China, one month, two months. While I was in Nairobi last year in November, he sends me a message. He says, Apostle, what? Your lift is done, please prepare money for payment. When he told me money for payment, I could not believe. So, a lot of money. So I went on my knees. I said, Lord, you started this, you will finish it. Because whatever God will start, God will finish. When you begin with God, you have confidence that God will finish what you started with him. So I prayed. I trusted God. We believed. I told our church. I came here. I told you, let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's trust God. Let's raise resources. Let's trust God. Now, in the process, um, I came back and uh, we started looking around. And, you know, we believed God. So somebody had some money with them. And uh, they told me, Apostle, I have heard you have said about lift. I have this money. I'm, I'm not so much in use of it. Do you mind if I gave it to you? You will find out the way on how to be able to pay back. But uh, so that that problem can be so. I said, sounds good. So I called our finance. I told them, there's this deal. What do you think? They said, it's a good deal. So let's get into writing an agreement about these resources. And so I told the pastor, I said, no, no, I don't need to write an agreement. Give me the account. I will wire the money. In the next 24 hours, 100 million shillings we are wired on the church account just like that <clears throat> why because i understood the wave of the speed the move of the speed because i'm sensitive and before you know it we cleared after sending that man i tell you the day we sent that man we struggled we went with andrew which america one of our finance we struggled we went to the bank there was no money Eventually, we got the money in Gogo. We went to pay the back. The, the, the first counting machine died. We stayed for about, we thought we were going to spend about one hour. We spent about two hours. They told us this has refused to go to another. We entered into another room. They, the two also died. Then we tried another machine. That one worked until halfway, it also collapsed. 
We thought we were going to spend there a few minutes, a few hours. We spent there a whole day. But in my spirit, I knew because we are breaking a limit about the image of the church in Africa or in Uganda. We are taking a fit. We are breaking. It could not come easily. Because whatever we have done now has opened up a new chapter in the churches in Uganda. After us, now we shall be able to hear of many churches with the elevators. But we had to break a limit and it didn't come easily. That's why every machine was breaking down and that's what the Lord told me. So the, the fourth one finally worked. So we left the bank very late in the evening. People went very early in the morning. So that is how now, now the time came to clear. For some reason, God brought in money. You brought in money here and there. You put things together. And today we have a lift which was supposed to be the least among the things we are doing in construction the Tower of Faith. So when you get encounters in high place, they will, they will position you. They will set you up. They will give you leverage. They will help you to, to pick the signals of the spirit. To pick spiritual coordinates. To understand what God is saying at every given time. You will be able to be aware that God wants me to take this day. And you take, as soon as you take that day, your breakthrough comes. Your breaking limits comes. But failure to take more time longer in the presence of God will miss out on what God is saying. The same scripture says, after that, then the voice of the Lord came and began to spoke and said, this is my son. God came to endorse. God came to endorse down his son Jesus. The Bible says, and the voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son in whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Every one of you to stay in command of life, you need to hear a clear voice, first hand clear voice from the Lord. You don't hear it from the supermarket, you don't hear it from a restaurant, you don't hear it from anywhere, you hear it when you choose to ascend higher. You need that voice and that voice must come to endorse and to affirm your presence and your being. Somebody say Amen. And when the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. And the disciples kept this to themselves and they did not tell anyone at this time when, what they had seen. Give us Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. The Bible says one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his son. Now, now here the disciples have decided, I mean they have discovered what makes Jesus to keep on breaking limits was the secret of prayer. Was the secret of abiding in the presence of God. So here they are not asking Jesus, teach us on how to make miracles. Teach us on how to do experience. Teach us. He said, no, they are looking for this thing. Say, teach us how to pray because now they have discovered the secret of greatness to any born again child of God is when you are not a stranger to prayer, but when you, you are a friend to prayer. So they came and said, Lord, now we have discovered, teach us on how to pray because they have discovered that it is in the room of prayer it is in the area of prayer that you are able to stand strong and stand powerful Matthew chapter 14 verse 22 to 23 Matthew chapter 14 verse 22 to 23 the Bible says immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd mm -hmm. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, and he was there alone. And the boat was already a, at a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the winds because the wind was against them. Here the Bible is still showing us what is making Jesus different from the rest of the people, from the rest of the disciples, alone with God, a moment of ascending alone. Now when it comes to ascension, you don't ascend with your wife or with your husband if you're married. You don't ascend with your parents. It is an individual effort. Every one of us, 
must ascend if you are to break limits limits over your family last week i was speaking to one of my daughters here she came to see me she's a student and uh the, this family has a history of um of failing math so i was looking through her report and i told her why did you get this she said you know i was afraid i told her you must break this limit you must ascend your family you must pray and believe and trust god i told her i'm going to pray for you i want you to break record in your family that you're going to become the first mathematician in your family but it is a personal effort i told that about me i was bad in math in senior one and two when i discovered that math and english is so pivotal in determining your grades in senior four i put in extra effort and i able to do it because i'm your pastor she told me i'm going to do it and i'm expecting to get an a from her in jesus mighty name somebody shout a louder you may <laughs> about this height thing and then we're going to be done number one principle i said the higher you go in god in the spirit the more limits of limitation you break the higher you go in god especially determined to go higher and higher and higher in the name of jesus the higher you go in god in the spirit the more limits of limitation determines how easily it is your height in the spirit in terms of life as in the boat bostra storms came they came to cha whether you like it or not they will come whether you're apostle t or apostle k or pastor p or pastor k or past storms storms have to come to prove the material through which you are made storms have to come to prove easily you will navigate through the storms of life number three i said the higher level of your spirituality in god gives you a better fighting position to any enemy the higher level of your spirituality in god gives you a better fighting position to any enemy in other words there's no enemy that becomes a, no arthritis no whatever challenge you cannot be able to confess no poverty no lack no iniquity no evil you cannot be able to overcome and that is what brings us to gti i said it is that i said in the military in the military they call it the ground of tactical importance always ascend higher you'll be able to fight better raise your prayer volume you'll be able to fight better raise your you'll be able to see possibilities where others are seeing failure and trouble and frustration so the higher level of your spirituality in god gives you a better fighting position to any enemy no enemy becomes impossible when you find the higher heights in god number four i said any force above you will influence the activities in your life you should endeavor that there are no forces above you the only force that should be above you should be god because any force above you will influence activities in your life the bible says we are seated far above powers principalities and rulers and all wicked forces and wicked devices of the enemy so if the wicked devices of the enemy are above you you'll be a christian but wicked you'll be a christian but compromising your values you'll be evil you'll be living a sinful life why because any force above you will have to influence the activities in your life all the activities of men in body or in love or in the flesh are influenced by the powers above them all the forces alcohol marijuana smoking fornication adultery cheating lying all those are powers that are under those bodies the moment you go above them then you'll be in charge of those evil powers and forces and it takes an effort number five i said it is our depth in god that guarantees our height in the spirit how deep are you in god how deep are you in the word how deep are you in your prayer life how deep are you in your devotion in god are you a shallow believer are you a narrow believer that is why your life will end you'll be narrow you'll be shallow you'll be a mediocre you'll be an average believer while everyone is enjoying and living high and above you will stay at that line where everyone is compromising and wherever is the spirit of complacency so it is our depth in god so us choosing to stay on the mountain puts us in a position of depth so it is our depth in god that guarantees our height in the spirit 
Number six. The higher you want to go, the more price you need to pay. That is why air travel is more expensive than land transport. The higher you go, or you want to go, the more price you may need to pay. That's why air tickets are more expensive than traveling by bus or by train or by car or by border border or by cycle. There's a price to pay for height. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said in verse 9, Go and buy for your own selves the all you need. The flight charges. Go and pay for the fuel charges. Jesus said, no. The reply, they are not enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Praise the name of Jesus. I said here that the forces that help. I have an airplane to fly are laws. And those are laws are with you. They are, when I was doing my study, I discovered they are four significant laws that enable a heavy aircraft with tens of tons to thrust through the law of gravity and keep up there. What are those laws? You need to understand. Number one is the law of lift. Ability to go against gravity. Number two is the law of thrust. To hit through the opposing forces. Number four is the law of drag. And number five is the law of weight. I'll say them again. The forces that help massive aircrafts, massive dreams, massive a visions to come to pass they are governed by laws and if you adopt to those laws you'll be able to carry your dream your vision to any destiny in life is the law of lift ability to go against the law of gravity the law of thrust to be able to pierce through the opposing forces the law of drag to be able to sail through the storms of life and the law of way to be able to go against the law of gravity and go and shoot higher above the normal ways and lastly the last principle the prices for higher heights are universal and accessible whoever is willing to pay them i noted them down here these prices are accessible they are universal anyone can access these prices in order to stay in flight in order to stay above what are those prices that you need to pay every one of us number one your quieter work with the holy spirit will cost you everything you need cost you the works of the flesh will cost you being water will cost you everything a quality work with the holy spirit is one of the prices every one of us needs to pay in order to attain the flight heights you can't work with the holy spirit and have as extra luggage around you number two price to pay in order to attain your flight level is a a consistent well planned life of prayer and fasting a consistent well planned life of prayer and fasting prayer and fasting take note a consistent it should be a lifestyle but consistent you don't only pray when things are okay you don't only pray when things are bad it must be consistent if you are to maintain that flight level it's a price to pay Sometimes you need to forego your bed. You need to forego your comfort. You need to forego food. When Imijera and Pastor Sarah was telling us, people were telling her, you see people at Kingdom, she used to have weight and trouble with weight and she was putting on big size. She said, they told her, people at Kingdom Life, they never put on weight. <laughs> Why? Because of her consistent in that area. You lose weight. It's a consistent lifestyle in order to stay above. Number three, price. 
a desperate and a higher level of hunger and thirst for God and godliness is a price to pay. A desperate and a higher level of hunger and thirst for God and godliness. You must be desperate for God. You must be hungry, hungry for God. Hunger, that hunger will motivate you to do the unusual, to give unusually, to pray unusually, fast unusually, to read the word. And it is a hunger, it is a thirst. It becomes a propelling force, a driving force that will drive you to go beyond the normal and the ordinary. And that is what will exemplify you from the majority and single you out as a single individual. Another fourth price to pay, I have said here, constant obedience to God and to the authority ordained by God to you. Constant obedience to God and the authority that God has put under you. That could be your pastor, it could be your departmental leader, it could be your boss, it could be your parents, it could be your seniors. It, but above all, God. That, you see, to obey God and the authority under you, it will cost you. It is a price to pay and you need to be consistent and constant. And lastly, but not the least price to pay to attain that height is intentional repentance at all time when it is demanded. Consistent, intentional repentance. In Jesus teaches repent for the kingdom of God is at hand until genuine repentance takes place you can never encounter the genuine or the true kingdom of God in your life what does repentance means change of your heart which leads to change of your conduct and change of your lifestyle that internal change that affects your outlook change for God and repent and be genuine and tell God I am sorry then that will bring results outside you when we do that ladies and gentlemen we shall be able to stay on top ladies and gentlemen welcome to the top of the game of life I want you to bow your head and talk to the Lord Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We thank you for the word that you have sent us. You stayed victorious even in the midst of the storms when they attacked. Even in the midst when they needed food for three days. Even in the midst when there were souls that needed resources. You stayed in charge because you maintained the higher place. I have showed your people. This is how you, you quicken and weaken us as we end this month of May. To this reality let all of us find a place and a time in the presence of god and seek god personally and be able to seek his goodness and his glory because until we have found this place we will remain ordinary and that is not what jesus made for us you have made us to sit with you in heavenly places far above all powers and dominions so we are meant to be in charge and be in command of life affairs give us the grace to be able to stand i pray that lord help us to stand above sicknesses diseases poverty lack debts sin iniquity inconsistence evil living fornication adultery lies and cheating help us to live above that ugly life help us to live above vomits of life help us to live above the mires of evil and iniquity help us to live above as we take a conscious choice lord to stay above and to live above lord i bless your people in jesus name we are prayed and believed amen